Hey, good morning, good morning. It is 0600. I'm looking down the way. That's my tree line street. Sugavit Soy 26. The Prompong BTS is uh, two minutes on my right shoulder. And I'm heading off to the left. I'm going to go walk up uh, Soy 41 just across the street from 26. Take a look around. I'm kind of in a weird sleep schedule lately. I, I don't know what it is. I went to sleep at 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning and I'm popping out of bed at 5.30 in the morning wide awake. I sleep good for a couple of two, three hours and then I get out and I explore. While it's somewhat cool, it's still pretty hot. Right now it's 6 in the morning. I guess it's, uh, I don't know, 80 degrees, maybe, maybe a little under that in Fahrenheit, but it's probably 70% humidity. So yeah, it's not super cool. It was cooler two days ago at this time, so it's a little hit or miss. But let's get out and explore until the heat of the day kicks in. Right at the top of 41 is this S11 Metro, or just Metro building, I'm not sure what it is. Ava Air is in there, Nokia, Stashaway, Asset Management, I'm not sure what that is, money I guess. And also at the top of 41 is the beautiful Madison building. The Madison is way out of my price range, but uh, it's here if you want that luxury condo. Here it is, 41. Just a short walk from my condo, Soy 26, maybe five or six minutes. Here's a Tops 24 hour market. It's located in this Miracle Mall. It's just a, a small strip mall. Maybe it's two stories high. Bunch of beauty shops in there. I think there's a dentist office. It's actually a very nice little market. I find myself in the Via Market more. It's also a Tops or a 24 hour. They're loading up the uh, fresh bakery. But the Via Market at the top of Soy 33 slash one. I'm over there at O'Shea's often. Plus I can find items in that Via Market that you can't find anywhere else. Not that I'm all about just Western options, but every now and then it's uh, it's cool to get a box of whatever crackers from home. You're gonna pay $4 a box, but who knows, they might cost $3.99 in the US today. Oh, and here's a little US display. So kettle potato chips and uh, Campbell's soup, although Campbell's soup is kind of readily available over here. I, I don't think I've ever had it, but there's some uh, ocean spray cranberry sauce if you need it and Hershey syrup. I don't know what else is in the uh, U.S. display. I've never heard of these uh, ketchup fries. And what is that? American popcorn. All right. And I haven't uh, did a lot of shopping in there recently. They were carrying some Kirkland, the Costco brand. And I got a big old, uh, one of those big old jars of chocolate covered raisins. That's looking across the street to Soy 28 in the address building. I have a couple of friends that live over there. A beautiful, beautiful building. The odd and even numbers, the further you get up Sukhumvit, they're not going to match up. So that Soy 28 will match up to Soy 43 on the odd side. Like I mentioned in this Miracle Mall, here's a hair place and a dental clinic. And I've had a couple of meals in here. It says authentic home cooking since 1970. You don't hear the horn that often. The Hot Shop Restaurant. On the right's a little dispensary in a place called Arowana Express, which I think is a small hostel. But I am not entirely sure. Maybe it's just a small hotel. Yeah, it has a front desk like it's a small hotel. And this is looking down Soy 41. I've been to the end many times. I had some subscribers that live down there and I think they told me there's a little shortcut to get to the backside heading over to Soy 49. I'm unaware if it's for residents only. Many of those buildings will just have a private gate with a little uh, key fob. But right here I'm going to take the time to show you one of my favorite little soys. It's also Soy 41 although it runs in between 41 and 43. It's just a series of, of little hotels and bars, but my good friend Stella Secret Bar is down on the left. So starting on the right, we have a 7-Eleven. 
and every time I walk by, now I'm at Stella's in the evening. They don't even open in, until 6 p.m. So this place is always closed, but it's obviously a, a little coffee shop. I see fruit smoothies, 60 baht. And right next door is a Chinese acupuncture. And then a Chinese restaurant. I think this is Japanese food. I'm not sure if it's open right now. Right next door to uh, Thai food. And all these places are four-story shop houses. It wouldn't surprise me if uh, it's just a family-owned business and maybe two generations live above. Across the way from that is On The Go. I'll call it a Japanese karaoke place. I'm not sure what this business is. Everybody's dressed up in uh, Thai traditional gear. It's called La Four. And next to that is uh, Lemur, Sukhumvit 41. Get out of the way of traffic here. I'm assuming it's a coffee shop. No, I take it back. It's a, a hostel. Hostel Bangkok. Yeah, the Lemoore uh, Hostel. I've walked by this a million times, and for some reason I thought it was a coffee shop. And just across the street from that is uh, dry cleaning. Now, I've had a couple of plates of food from this. Hannah, uh, one of them in the restaurant, and one time they ran a plate of food over to Stella's. These businesses, they all work tight. There's no food at Stella's, so there are plenty of menus behind the bar. And right next door is a massage place. Miralik Massage Heron. And across the way, more Japanese food. And then there's level 41. Again, I'm going to call these Japanese snack bars or karaoke places just because when I walk by, that's who's partying in there. And sometimes some uh, high-ranking officials, you'll see a Mercedes sitting out front. Get out of the way here. This is a tight little alley. And right next door, I believe that is a Japanese restaurant. Yes, I've, I've ate in there. And then right over here, this is called the 41 Suite, Bangkok. It appears to be a four or five star uh, story hotel. Can't remember, one of my buddies said he stayed over here on Soy 41 when he made his move over. Maybe it was there at uh, the 41 Suite. And across the way, here's another snack bar, I guess we'll call it. The New Days. When well, I missed a business here, I'm not exactly sure what this is. Probably another uh, karaoke bar. There's just a string of them and, and the young lady sitting out front. And here's the lobby of the 41 Suite. Looks like a nice clean place. And here's another Japanese restaurant right next to a fun bar called Libertish. I know they have uh, karaoke happening in there, but it's more a, a cocktail bar. My friend Alyssa used to work in there. And across the way is the Arowana Residence Prompong, another smaller hotel. And that's right next to this snack bar. I don't know how you pronounce that. Peony? Peony, perhaps? Oh, and this is uh, the telltale signs of a balloon party. One of the lady's birthday. It's usually met with uh, some free food, party style. Now, I don't know what's going on here. This is called Teriyaki Bar. I'm assuming it's a restaurant. Once again, I'm normally down here. This is my good friend's bar, Stella Secret Bar, and it's not unusual to head over here at midnight. This is kind of an after hours place for me anyhow. So many of these uh, restaurants are closed. I just see the karaoke places, but stop on in, say hi to Stella. Tell her uh, you found the channel from perhaps from my YouTube channel and uh, she gets a kick out of that. Now this Japanese restaurant has changed hands recently. Uh, it was closed for a while and now it's back open. Both of them on the corner, I, I think they have new owners. I don't know what's going on here. If this is also a restaurant. Oh, it says music and bar. You're welcome in any of these. Uh, I guess it's Hannah, JT. And any of these uh, K 
karaoke or Japanese snack bars, don't you know, feel out of place. You're 100% welcome, but you're probably going to go in there and it's going to feel like you're in Tokyo. All the Japanese businessmen at one in the morning are still going to have their uh, suit jackets off and, and maybe their ties off, but they're all going to be in their uh, white shirts. And right next to Stella's is, uh, it appears, somebody's private residence. Whenever I see a setup like this, I, I really want to... Uh, Maybe live in a building like that at one time. I don't know what it's called. Just Kun. Now the other Japanese restaurant on the corner here. Okay, it's got a name now. Uh, Kataro Label. Yeah, it still looks like uh, they're under a bit of construction. We've now made our way up to Soy 43, so I'm going to backtrack and get you back down on 41, and we'll explore. This is the Toyota dealership, it's up on Sukhumvit, but this is where they do the bodywork. If you were to take a quick right turn, that's Sukhumvit, straight ahead. So if you're walking down, you pass the Tops Market, either 41 or 43, we'll get you to the little Soy 41 side alley, and you'll find Stella's. And that's the alley we just came up, so the car at the end of the road making a right turn, that's where we're heading now. And now we're back turning on to the main Soy 41. There's two interesting buildings right to the right. They're a little bit more, looking over my shoulder here, make sure a motorbike doesn't come out of, of nowhere. Okay, well, they're down the way, but first, and I'll talk about them in a minute, is the Lumpini Suite. Now, I really like this Prompong area. I was living in Anoop for a year when I made my move over, and I looked at two units. In fact, I'll take you in there. There's a nice swimming pool. I think it's eight stories high. I'm up on the top floor. And I was just keeping it simple. Looking at a one bedroom. I want to say it was 36 square meter. And then for the heck of it, I looked at a two bedroom. It wasn't that big, maybe 62 square meter. Yeah, it was just kind of two small rooms. I ended up in a 52 square meter one bedroom that uh, suits my needs just fine. But check out this Lumpini suite. I don't like to quote prices because uh, things change so quick, but I want to say, ooh, a year and a half ago, shoot, I, I think 18,000 baht for the one bedroom, I think. And a lot of things are negotiable. But even if it's 20, 22,000 baht, that's not uh, crazy out of line. You can easily spend uh, 120,000 baht in uh, Prom Pong on a really fancy apartment. Now here's a dental land. The guard and the side entrance to that fancy building. What was it? The Madison? And I'm curious as to what this business is. I walk by it all the time. Mama Bakery. Mama's or Mommy's Heart Made Bakery since 2019. I'm not sure where it is though. Yeah, I don't think it's in, in there. I'm not sure what's going on. I think it used to be next to that dental land. These two buildings are somewhat uh, in interesting to me. The River Place and the River Court. I went in there. Their apartments. And the manager took me around. They were very affordable. I want to say, ooh, it was a one bedroom and it was pretty big. It was, uh, what was it? 49 square meters, something like that. Don't quote me on these sizes. Anyhow, I want to say it was uh, 14,000 baht. Again, this was two years ago. And as I'm looking at it, um, she kind of got a feel for me and said, well, how about 10,000 baht? Now, again, this was coming off the health crisis and all. So maybe she's not as anxious to come down that quick. But even if you could get it for 15,000 baht, this is some prime, prime real estate. The only issue with these buildings, now here's a security guard. They're all gonna have a security guard. And straight ahead where you see the two lights on, there's a really nice swimming pool off to the right. But the units were no frills. Let's put it that way. They had a, like a Thai wet bath. They did not have a kitchen. They had pretty good sized balconies or medium size, and they had a little area out there with a sink 
and I guess you call that a Thai wet kitchen. To be quite honest, I, I mean, that I wasn't put off with. I, I don't do a lot of cooking, and I would kind of prefer to cook on the patio anyhow. But the hallways were full of uh, bicycles and toys, and I just kind of got a feel that um, it was the kind of building where maybe multiple families were staying in one unit. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, probably good, hardworking people. But it's going to come with an extra bit of uh, noise was my consideration. And like my building, shoot, I think I'm the only person on my floor during the daytime. Whereas these uh, River Court and River Place, I kind of have a feeling that the hallways kind of might be used for uh, just kids having a good time and all. Not that that would totally put me off, but I understand why it was a little bit cheaper. You have a, what is that, VGology? It says Veggie Cold Pressed. So there's a couple of little businesses on the bottom floor here. I know there's a, a tailor shop. That's my mistake. The VGology is on the outside of the uh, river court. And there's another little uh, side soy coming off of 41. It's probably also a 41. And I know there's a Japanese restaurant at the end there. So let's walk back and take a look. I think there's an apartment they're setting up a chicken stand or something. I think there's another apartment building just to the left. Yeah, and don't let me put you off on uh, that River Court or River Place. I mean, if you're going to jump on the train and, and head 20, 25 minutes down the line to uh, get that affordable apartment, heck, the trade-off of staying right in Prom Pong, which is very, very central Bangkok easy to get to anywhere, easy to walk to anywhere. Yeah, the trade-off might be, uh, it might be fine living in a more uh, traditional building. And as far as the wet bath and all, there's solutions to all of that. I'm, I'm sure this lady who went at the time, again, I can't remember. I, I think I was looking at a unit for 16 and she said, how about 10? Um, I'm sure if I would have said, well, I'm a little concerned with the wet bath. I'd like to put some kind of divider or something. I'm, I'm sure she would have said, go right ahead. <laughs> you know, just pay for it. Have it done by a, a licensed guy or no problem. So here's the Japanese place. But this is the building I was interested in. And there's the security guard. I don't see a name. It's maybe a little, I won't say fancier, but... A little bit more than say that river court and again if it were 5,000 baht more a month that might be worth it yeah, I remember these uh, for whatever reason I remember these patios being a little larger but maybe that's it but right under the air conditioner is uh, a sink and that's it if you want to cook you put a burner out there and and the unit did have like a refrigerator right in the living room it also only had now she only showed me one place and i kind of thanked her and gave her a little tip for her time and then went on my way i'm sure if i were super interested she would have showed me five other units but the one particular she showed me it only had one ac in the bedroom so that was a little bit of a concern to me i have now learned that just one ac will cool one of these apartments down. In fact, my air conditioner in the bedroom, I don't know what was going on. My power bill was a thousand baht more than it should have been. And I think it was not cycling off. So I stopped using it and I just had the air conditioner set pretty high at like 25 C in the uh, living room. And then I had a fan blowing it towards the bedroom and it kept it cool just fine i've since had it serviced I, I, i'm kind of a have it serviced twice a year kind of guy i mean sh the landlord will pay one time but i just pay the air conditioner person it, it's not that much i think it was 900 baht call it a thousand with a tip and they come out and uh make sure there's no mold happening but since the last time they uh came out and cleaned the unit i have tested that bedroom unit and i see it's circling, circulating off now. So I'm back to using my, my bedroom. And here's a private compound. 
And this over here, this city nest, I mentioned in another video as I went to look at the whatever it was, the one that came down to 10,000 really quick, I said, well, hey, what about this city nest? And it looks kind of sharp. And I want to say they were only two bed, two bass in there, and they were like 60,000 baht a month. So that is the kind of swing you get just from one building to another. I don't even want to know with that Madison, call it a 120 square meter unit in that building. I'm sure it's 80, 100,000 baht, but these are just guesses. And this is how the wealthy, they roll around Bangkok. They're not in limousines. They're in these tricked out Toyota vans. This one's just standing by, I'm sure, to pick up his client exactly on time in 20 minutes or whenever the client needs to head to the law office or whatever's going on there. But yeah, rich people, they have a nice van with a tricked out leather seat, maybe a, a desk work area. And off to the right here, you see these uh, these other three vans. I'm going to guess these are for tours because that Adelphi Grand, they do long-term apartments in there, but it's a hotel. I'm getting in everybody's way here. Yeah, there's the Adelphi. Probably a 15-story unit. But if you want to check out this Prom Pong area... You can check out the prices at Adelphi. A goat is the best place when you're taking a look at Southeast Asia. I'll double check. I was a Hotel.com guy in the U.S. forever. And I'll, I'll check between the two because oftentimes I'll have a 5% off at Hotel.com on my credit card. And a goat beats it every time. Usually 10 bucks a night it beats it. And I, I've never figured this out. There's always a guard sitting right here, and I don't want to add to confusion like trying to, to go in there. I don't know if that's a private residence tucked away back there. It's the size of the White House, if it is. And then there's even a, I'll call it like a servant's quarters out front, just some small apartments. But I have no idea. There's all these cool private homes. Here's another one. And this is another beautiful building, the Chiron Garden Residence. Maybe 10 stories high. And this, no, that's the garage to that one private residence. I was going to say it's a restaurant. I'm mixing up my soy 41 and 43. There's a restaurant on 43 that's been closed for a year, so hopefully it'll open soon. Right to the right is just a string of uh, townhomes, but they must be uh, pretty expensive. I'll see Mercedes and BMWs backing into these these spaces. I've never walked down there. I think I'm going to uh, just to see if there's something I need to know about. But I think it's just a private little street. And some of these are fixed up really nice. They're just beautiful little homes in the trees. So we're almost to the end of 41. I'm, again, I'm curious if I can sneak back over. I know, I want to say it's part of Soy 39, kind of wraps around like a like a spider's web, and uh, it 39 goes straight just like this Soy 41, but then it heads off to the right and kind of passes behind Soy 41. I want to say my uh, subscriber said that there was a way for them to go over there. But I'm guessing it's a, a private way. Now this is under the tree. Huh, that kind of looks like a restaurant. But it could be a spa. I'm not sure if that's a little food truck. It looks like a food truck. There's a couple of two, three buildings down here. The Ashton on the right. But I've always just uh, saw these home straight ahead so I call it a dead end now over on soy 43 I know you can get back to the back end to soy 39 which is kind of nice because you can then go over to soy 49 and all those restaurants and all and I'm pretty sure this is a school 
I might get chased out of here. There are security guards everywhere. But I remember walking over here about a year ago and there were a bunch of kids playing soccer to the right here. Yeah, there's the soccer field. So I don't know if it's a private little school or where kids live or something. I'm not sure. You have to be a little bit careful. There's a, a, a person, and I'm grateful for everybody that leaves comments, but every time I talk about, oh, here's the Ashton on Soy 41, he'll leave a comment saying, oh, I just looked it up. You can get a whatever for 60,000 baht. And I'll send a message back uh, cautioning him, where are you getting those prices? Because um, not that I know what's going on, but everything I've seen online when you call or show up in person, there's no 60,000 baht unit. They're like, oh, uh, yeah, that's gone. We have one for 80,000 baht. And other issues like this Rain Tree Village. There's another property called Rain Tree Village. It's probably a sister property, and it's up past the W District, kind of far back from the train. And they had a one-bedroom for 21,000 baht, I think. But they, they mixed up the ads, and they said Rain Tree Village, Soy 41, 21,000 baht. So I came showing up, and this is a beautiful building. And the person in the lobby said, I don't know what you're talking about. Everything in here is three bedrooms or four bedroom. And the cheapest unit we have right now is, it was very high, like 90,000 baht. So keep all that in mind when you're doing a little armchair shopping. Let's just say most of the ads you're going to see online they're not real or they're a year and a half old or two years old or sometimes if you look at the fine print it's uh 2024 it might say available in december of 2025 for this price so who knows what it's going to rent from a year and a half from now that's just how they do some of that advertising it's uh just trying to get customers so don't really count on those prices yet he keeps leaving those comments. Uh, I checked this building, it's this much. I checked that building, it, it's this much. And that's fine. I just hope he's not uh, really planning his uh, life around those prices because I did that same thing. I'm an over planner and I sat in San Diego having fun, picking my neighborhoods and, and my buildings. I've, I've been over here at that time a half dozen times. So I knew I liked on nude at the time. I liked Prom Pong. I knew the buildings. I'm checking the prices, and surprise, when I got over here, everything was four, five, six thousand baht more. Again, that's not the end of the world, but I don't think one of the ads, and I hit the ground running. The second day I was here, I was ready to sign my condo lease. Nobody called me back on any of those ads. To get a real number, you're going to have to establish a, a relationship with a realtor and have them send you the exact facts as to what's going on. The issue with that is, how do I put it? If, uh, let's see this rain tree village, I, I don't know how big it is, but let's say there's 10 units in there for rent. I'm just making all this up. You may in fact have to go through 10 different realtors to see all 10 units. And if you call XYZ realtor, they might say there's nothing available in rain tree village. The translation is I have nothing I can rent you in Rain Tree Village, and I'm not gonna work with another agent because we don't split commissions on apartments. Now, maybe they will on a 120,000 baht a month apartment, but my little puny budget of, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like 19,000 baht, but 12,000 baht is much better. It's hard to even get anybody to call you back when uh, you're dealing at those type of levels, but they're are ways to get it done so don't get frustrated and the days of just showing up at the condo office and and asking them what do you have in here that's available those are kind of going by the wayside i moved up here to prom pong a little over a year ago i just renewed my lease for two more years uh last month and i'm super happy but I had to see that unit through a realtor and I took the time. Here comes a police officer. I, oh, he's probably going to ask me what I'm doing. I took the time to, uh, no, just out on patrol. I thought somebody called the cops on me. <laughs> I mean, not that big a deal. Oh, is it? 
I'm always telling this guy to get on the other side of the street. Um, it little discussion going on here. It hap- It hasn't happened to me yet, other than one time I was up in uh, where, what was it, Bering? I think up in the Soy 100s, and I was walking around filming, and I kind of caught a little of attention, and I think they were about ready to have a discussion with me. What are you filming? You know, it's uh, not a hundred YouTubers up there, or a thousand like there are in Lower Sukhumvit. A guy walking around with a camera is uh, an everyday occurrence down here. That's probably a, not a good thing. No, and I think I got off track. But when my realtor showed me the apartment I ended up taking, just doing my due diligence, we went down to the condo office with a realtor and she said, uh, you know, this was all in Thai, of course. Do you have any keys down here that I can show my client? And there was one unit and I don't know, there has to be 150 units in my building. I can't believe there was only one unit available through the condo office. And had I walked in cold and I did do that now that I think about it, they would have said, you need to come back with a realtor. So keep all that in mind. I'm not trying to frustrate anybody. I'm just telling you how it is. So I just asked this gentleman and and he told me I, I can't get through over to Soy 39 from here. So once again, I don't know if there's a, a private gate. I'm I, Is it... I'm forgetting the name of the subscriber. I shouldn't say it anyhow, but please leave a comment if I'm wrong or if there's a private little alley from one of these buildings. He pretty quick said, no, you can't do it. And even if there is a little private way from one of the two buildings, it appears that there are homes on the other side. Okay, I just confirmed with my... Thank you so much. I I confirmed with my second guard. He says, no can do. He's the rain tree guard. And, you know, I said, hey, I'm not asking you to take me there, but is there a private gate through your building to get over to Soy 39 and walk over to Soy 49? And he said, no can do. Hey, and you know, as I've walked down Soy 41, I'm thinking about what I just said. I'm certainly not trying to come off as the uh, I've lived here two whole years guy. I've, I've got it all figured out. I do not. I don't think I could live here for 22 years and have it all figured out. It's just a... Uh, a constantly evolving city. I mean, before I moved over here, trust me, I had, I think, 25 different buildings and ads that I was ready to respond to the second I had boots on the ground, and I did exactly that. I already had my phone. I probably, I'm surprised I didn't make the calls from California. I didn't go that far, but the second I got over here and I was ready to go look at uh, units, I called and lined every single one of them. It was over 20. If if it was closer to 30, I wouldn't be surprised. Not one single ad returned my my email, my call. I I take that back. One did about 10 days later, and I was already in a unit. I will say this. The unit I'm in today, I just spent a year in that place on a one-year lease, and I just signed a two-year lease. And I looked it up. My agent is no longer at that uh, different real estate office, but it's still listed at the price I paid. Well, I got a little bit better deal. It's still listed as available. Come get it today, and I'm going to be in it for the next three years. So I'll leave it up to you. The the person who, and I forget who it was, who, who keeps looking up the different uh, listings and the buildings I'm showing, that's great. Have a little fun, but use those uh, websites like HipFlat as more a guide. Uh, you know, if you're seeing a unit for thirty-eight thousand baht, if you're okay spending forty-five thousand baht, or or maybe even more, that's what it's going to be. But if you're doing what I did, which is I really like this unit and thirty-eight's pushing it. You know, thirty-five's my my max, but I'll go thirty-eight. That's not going to happen. Do your due diligence, pick out your neighborhood, pick out your building, and then go from there. Just don't uh, don't think those are rock-solid prices because they are not. Now, the prices on Facebook, those are usually owner-occupied deals, and they come and go fast. I also did a little Facebook shopping. You'd see the ad there one day, and three days later, it's gone. If I were to make a suggestion, I would narrow down 
the area. If you've been over here and you kind of know what area you like, narrow down the area, perhaps narrow down the building, then get a hold of a realtor and, and say, keep an eye on these, whatever, five buildings and send me information every day. I'm sure they could just do it, you know, plug it into the computer and it, it spits it out in a program. Send me information every day for exactly what's available today. And then you keep track. I mean, these apartments over here, when you're in Prom Pong and, and you pulled off something like I did, they wanted 22000 I got it for 19 and locked it down for three years at 19 Those deals come and go in one day. Again, I'm not saying it's impossible to do, but it's going to be much easier when you're working with a realtor and you can see what the uh, real-time information is. I certainly wouldn't lock anything down from abroad. You're still gonna have to do all that in person, but it'll make your life much easier when you get over here. And I might head off in another direction and get a bite to eat. I appreciate you watching, following along. There'll be more videos to come. This is Soy 41 off Sukhumvit in the uh, Prompong area. A great area. See ya.